Welcome to Community Presbyterian Church in our home worship service for December 13, 2020. Just a few announcements before we begin worship. I will be hosting our virtual coffee hour on Zoom at one o'clock this week. This will give us all a chance to get home and then share some fellowship following whichever version of our service you participate in. Now that we have resumed in-person worship at the church, the online services in their current format will continue until we sort out the technology to record the live service and post it for viewing. For many years, we here at Community Presbyterian have assisted the good folks at St. Paul's Anglican Church in Almont with providing a Christmas dinner for the folks in the community, especially those that might be alone or unable to afford a good meal. December 25th, this meal is being supported by local churches and service clubs and organizations that care about their community at large. Thanks to our ongoing pandemic, the community Christmas dinner at St. Paul's will be different. It will be done by takeout and prepared by the Centennial Restaurant in Pakenham for distributing on December 25th. Please be assured, we have authorization from both Leeds and Grenville, Lanark Health Unit, and the Anglican Diocese of Ottawa for this approach to help those in need in our area. If you wish to receive a meal, please contact St. Paul's at the number that is on your screen. Back in March, when this pandemic was declared, we here at Community Presbyterian Church were blessed to receive substantial donations to offer assistance to those that may find themselves in need during the difficult and confusing times that we are all still facing in our communities. At that time, there were promises from the various government agencies and departments to help everyone through this. Many of these promise, promises have been kept to some degree or another, but we know there are still some folks that are cr falling into the cracks that our social safety net still manages to miss. If you are in need of assistance or know of someone who is in our church family or in our community, please reach out to me here at the church or through my cell available on the church website and we will try to help financially as best we are able. Let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship God. Let us join in our call to worship responsibly. In this season of Advent, we celebrate God's joy, knowing that Christ is coming to bring healing and wholeness to the world is a source of delight. When we gather for worship, it is a celebration, an opportunity to rejoice in all that God is doing among us and beyond us. We welcome our neighbors and celebrate God's goodness. Even when we face difficulty and trouble, we sing a song of faith, confident that Jesus is able to redeem our suffering world. Together, we are a sign of God's joy for the world. Let us pray. God of transformation, we rejoice that you lift up the lowly and bind up the brokenhearted. We marvel at your power to change hearts and lives. Fill us with your spirit this season so that our voices declare your goodness and our lives proclaim your mercy in Jesus Christ. Amen.
loving God, compassionate Son, healing Spirit, holy one in three and three in one, you approach us with such kindness and tenderness. You look kindly on us, no matter what our state or condition. You care for this world is greater than we could ever ask or imagine. You bring order from the chaos. You turn weeping into laughter. You turn sorrow into joy and death into new life. You redeem all that appears lost making all things new. And so we come to you in joy, resting from our work and responsibilities, trusting you to bring peace amid our anxiety and hope into these uncertain times. Receive our worship this day as we anticipate the difference your gifts will make to us through Christ, your Son, our Savior. Generous and gracious God, we confess the smallness of our love and the narrowness of our concern. These days we easily become preoccupied with statistics and case numbers, opportunities to say thanks, to offer encouragement, to remember each other in friendship slip by. Anxiety turns us inward and anger can make us lash out. Forgive us for neglecting the joy at the heart of the Advent season. Hear us now as we pray silently to you, Lord, admitting our sins against you and others in our lives. Gracious God, turn our hearts back to you and inspire us with your love made flesh in Jesus Christ. Help us share the joy that we have from knowing you and receiving your love and joy always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, in Jesus Christ we are a new creation. There is nothing we have done, nothing we could ever do that can separate us from the love of God shown to us in Jesus Christ. Know that you are forgiven, and with this joyful truth, have the courage to forgive one another. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us pray. God of wisdom, by the inspiration of your spirit, open our hearts so that we may hear and understand your words speaking in the scriptures. Open our minds to your renewing grace at work in Jesus Christ, your living word. Then open our eyes to see what you are doing in the world. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Continuing at verse 19. Now this was John's testimony. When the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was, he did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, 
the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God around us, thanks be to God. Let us join with Susan and I in our next hymn. involved. When a prime minister or president or a national head of state makes a visit to a local community, a raft of special agents or protective service personnel check out every building along the route they will travel and near the place for any public appearances planned. They go over each building with a fine tooth comb from roof to basement in their efforts to prepare for their leader's safety. We often refer to them as the advance team. They work invisibly behind the scenes to make sure that everything is ready for the big event that is about to take place. In today's scripture lesson, we encounter such an advanced man. However, he's not a member of any special agency. He's not preparing for a visit from a head of state. He's not checking out parade routes, assuring anyone's safety. He is telling us to get ready, to get ready for a visit from the most important person in human history. His name is John the Baptist, who we have heard about regularly during the Advent season, very many years. But today we are told that he came as a witness to testify concerning 
that light. Now that statement may not mean so much as it did 2,000 years late ago, but it did back then. Because we already know the ending of this story, which the people then did not. Our world has already been visited by the Holy One from God. We don't need an advanced man to prepare his way like they did. Or do we? Do we still need to listen to John the Baptist? Perhaps there is something in his message that we are taking for granted. That is the problem with the familiar. We fall into a sense of complacency. As a result, Christmas can become simply a festival of the familiar rather than an encounter with the Holy One. Two words in this passage stand out, witness and light. We have all heard about John's call for repentance and change, and today we hear him calling us to prepare for Christmas by building a straight road in the desert for God to travel on. You would think John had been watching them rebuild Church Street, which we did not that long ago, rather than quoting the prophet Isaiah. Fill up the low spots, knock the tops off the high spots, level it out, make it straight and smooth. What does Isaiah say is the purpose of all this construction? So that the glory of the Lord may be revealed for all the world to see. Folks, John's message about Christmas is that God wants every person in the entire world to know the power and glory of God. In his oratorio, The Messiah, George Frederick Handel majestically captures these words of Isaiah in music. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Getting ready for Christmas is not about decorated trees or office parties or even family gatherings. Maybe this year that we can fully appreciate that. We have all had to adjust this year due to the pandemic. We have all waited and hoped to get back to normal. I believe the one common denominator for us all through this is that normal may not have been so good after all. Maybe it is time for us to consider what needs to be different for us to be a part of God's mission. Because Christmas really is about a mission. A mission that God has placed upon every one of us to open up a path to God for others who are in need of God's love and grace. Not the kind of path that winds through a forest or that you follow, but a way for others to learn about and come to know the wonders of Jesus. If we really hear that, it will have an effect on both our preparation for and celebration of Christmas. John is telling us that God expects us to do something as a result of what God did at Christmas. While that may seem like a trite statement, there are any number of folks here in our pews as well as in many church pews or at home in these crazy times, who could be accused of having an armchair faith. To be sure, they come to church in whatever way they are able, but they seem to want to be spoon-fed. And then after they leave their building or switch off their computer or TV, that's the end of it, until the next time that they come. Our relationship to God is not a consumer faith in which everything is neatly packaged for us 
And all we have to do is pick it up off the shelf when we need it. Nor is faith a let George do it affair, in which we allow a dedicated few to burn themselves out doing the tasks which belong to us all. John is telling us all that Christmas road building requires the act of involvement of every one of us year round. He is saying we are to build these roads everywhere, into our work, our schools, our communities, our neighborhoods, anywhere and everywhere that we go. The second word that stands out to me this week is light. Three summers ago, a catastrophe struck our new home. On one of the hottest weekends, while having a house full of family, the electricity went out. Now, losing hydro may not seem too crucial in the warm summer months. Oh yes, it did get a bit warm, so we were able to open some windows and let the breeze cool us off. Yes, we were limited in options for our cooking. After all, the microwave was unavailable, which bothered the young people more than it did Marianne or I. But the real catastrophe was that the Wi-Fi couldn't work. Four 20-somethings and two smartphone-addicted clergy had a real serious disaster on our hands. During the eight or so hours without power, I was reminded of a conversation I had had with the late Mel Bowes while our house was being built. He recommended that we consider getting a backup generator that runs on natural gas that can be set up in a home to provide for almost all of its electrical needs. It could come on automatically and provide electricity, especially in the country setting we reside in. He thought it would be a good preventative measure to invest in. After our little inconvenience, we decided to invest in such a machine. And last week we had another brief power outage that my stepdaughter Elizabeth, one of the ones panicking previously, didn't even notice beyond the split-second flicker of a couple of lights. It makes me realize that we have come a long way technologically in providing light to see by. However, as I read the newspapers and hear about shootings in schools and messy divorces and people dying of drug overdoses, I also realized that technology cannot generate light for our hearts souls. If actions do speak louder than words, and I very much believe they do, then at Christmas God is virtually shouting at the world that God cares enough to enter this place we live and bring light to the dark spots in our lives that we cannot seem to find the light on our own. In this year of quarantine and separation and loneliness, Christmas light is about an end to isolation and despair, that even our best efforts at Christmas can't stop. Christmas is about hope. When the stage of life is the darkest, Christmas is about a future that God has provided for eternity when death appears to be the final word in life. We need to hear this message again and again. Somehow the passage of time takes a subtle toll on our spirits. And because it happens little by little, even to the most dedicated people, we don't usually notice it. But then one day, suddenly gets dark and we wonder what happened. This morning we have heard from the advance man. 
He reminds us that God has turned on the brightest light in the universe, brighter than any sun or star or gas-powered electric generator. He also reminds us that we are still the advanced people for this generation. It is up to us. We are to tell everyone who will listen that the light has already come. Once again, I want to paraphrase John's Advent message. Prepare the way of the Lord to words for our time. Light it up. Amen. Let us take a moment now and enjoy our ministry of music with Di and Susan. Jesus, be our guest and enter our lives today with your blessing. We are lonely for you and the peace you bring. Draw near to us in friendship and faithfulness so that in this season which combines celebration in the face of uncertainty, we may know your presence. And sing with all your people, rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our guide, and show us the way to wisdom and gratitude. We are thankful for the kindness we know in friends and good neighbors, in warm houses and warm smiles, which hold off the darkness and fear for the future. Encourage us to reach out to those who need your embrace and ours, so that together we may sing of your presence. Rejoice. Rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our hope. Touch us with your healing and grace. We remember before you all those we know and those known to you alone who are living with loss or illness this season. Those who face depression or discouragement and all who will find it hard to be merry this year. Shine the light of your comfort into their lives as we sing of the hope that dawns in your love. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our King and claim your rightful place in our hearts. Our world is struggling for the justice and mercy you bring. Draw near to our leaders and all citizens working for peace and justice, and those striving to contain and heal the effects of pandemic. Encourage honorable action and cooperation on all sides. Give hope to people under oppression 
and to those who live with fear or hunger day by day. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Lord, we each have so much to be thankful for, and we also have so many concerns for others and worldly things that we offer those to you silently now for your care. Almighty Creator, hasten the day when the world's peoples will live as neighbors, reconciled in your truth and freedom. For the coming of this day, we pray in Jesus' name always. And we join together to pray the words Jesus taught us in the form that we know best. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join with Susan and die in our closing Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light, like a little candle burning in the night. In the world is darkness, so we must shine, you in your small corner and I in mine. Jesus bids us shine, first of all, for him. Well, he sees and knows it, if our light grows dim, he looks down from heaven to see us shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. Jesus bids us shine then for all around. Many kinds of darkness in this world abound. Sin and want and sorrow, so we must shine. You in your small corner and I join in our benediction responsibly. The God who makes everything whole sends us forth to bring healing to the brokenhearted and to comfort the mourners in our midst. The Christ who comes to be with us sends us forth to stand with the oppressed, to release those held captive by sin, to invite the lonely into our lives. The Spirit who calls you to faithfulness, sends us forth to proclaim the gospel that today is God's moment, the day when all people will be blessed. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. God will be there.